straight line speed is important to you. Well, we're about to answer the $50,000 question. Three, two, one. In the American corner, it's Ford Mustang Mach 1. In the Japanese corner, the Toyota Supra. In the actual Japanese corner, the brand new twin turbocharged Nissan Z, a 400 horsepower rear wheel drive legend whose computer won't let you do a burnout. Ah hmm. uh ah, -uh. no need to hit the fast forward button because the action starts now. an exact tie. Except I'm not going to because even though the two cars crossed the line at exactly the same time, the Mustang was going three miles an hour more quickly. Off the line, you didn't know how it was gonna go because that thing's 78 extra horsepower was eaten up by its 500 extra pounds. But once the tires hooked up and its dim-witted 10-speed automatic finally figured out what to do, well, <laughs> horsepower wins again. Meanwhile, the Supra is just an overachiever because the Supra is a BMW and it does everything you ask of it every single time. So it puts all the power down, the whole shot's perfect, every shift is perfect. Well, and here we are. It doesn't hurt that it weighs 260 pounds less than the Z. That's really not all that far. The Z's big issue is traction off the line. Michelin, Michelin, Bridgestone. But it has launch control and it incinerates the rear tires when the launch control works, which isn't all that often. It burns out the whole way through first gear and then slam shifts into second, which is awesome, and then bangs into third and keeps the wheel spin going. But by 60 miles an hour, it's already two tenths of a second behind the other two cars. Then it finally hooks up. And that's where the horsepower kicks in. And well, it stays right behind them the rest of the way through the quarter mile. Uh, that's all well and good, but there wasn't a clutch pedal in the bunch. Luckily, the Z is available with a six-speed manual. It trades the automatics complicated to engage launch control in favor of a no-lift shift program. Unfortunately, it's very quiet, thanks to a bunch of genuinely stupid drive-by noise regulations that penalize manual transmissions. Uh, Nissan chose not to fix this problem the way Porsche has by putting annoyingly long gear ratios in. Instead, they installed a very quiet muffler. And that is a very easy thing to fix. <sighs> Unfortunately, Nissan has assured me that if I fix this problem using a Sawzall, they will take that Sawzall to my genitalia. So I'll just uh, <clears throat> leave this here and uh, half this race will be very quiet. Three, two, Thanks to that gearing, the six-speed manual is only three-tenths behind the nine-speed automatic to 60, which is about the time it takes to make the one-two shift. The lead grows to half a second by the quarter because the Mercedes-sourced automatic's gears are shorter and more closely stacked. As a result, the automatic car's rear wheels experience on average 10% more torque than the manual's over the course of the quarter mile, so it wins by a small margin. 
For the record, both of them would have crucified Nissan's old 370Z. The new Z is in, in an entirely different league of speed. One occupied by another two-seater that's exactly the same size, and the same horsepower, and the same torque, and the same weight. You know where this is going, right? a second and not a single mile an hour apart at the end of a quarter mile. <laughs> they could have called this the 470Z. Well, there you have it. Or as Captain Obvious might point out, adding two turbos to the Z gave it a lot of firepower. Enough firepower, it turns out, to almost keep up with an Aston Martin and a Ford Mustang Mach 1 and a notoriously overachieving BMW Yoda. However, most importantly, that's almost enough firepower that with nothing more than a grippier set of tires, the Z would have been able to keep up with them all.